We're going to follow along with the scripting docs you can get there from going to infinitypbr.com, clicking on the scripting docs, and then find the projectile factory overview and quick start. The documentation has a whole lot of information about the different objects and how you can use them, including all their code and a whole lot more. So definitely check this out and come to the Discord if you have any questions. Projectiles can be made of all sorts of different components, but a lot of them are going to be made of three parts, and we're going to do that for this demo here. Uh, we have a projectile itself. The particle we're working with is from Magic Arsenal by Arcanor Visual Effects VFX. Uh, I just got this, and we're going to convert these to the projectile. So if you have the projectile factory and Magic Arsenal, you can download the free integration and all of the projectiles will be ready to go and you can just drag them drop them put them into your project so we're going to start with a particle that's the missile itself this is the thing that's going to fly back and forth and we're also going to use a muzzle explosion this is the thing that will flash when the muzzle fires and then an explosion for the collision so these are the three components that we're going to work with now, of course, projectiles can be filled with all sorts of different things. So if your projectile only has one component or has different things, that's perfectly fine as well. So we're gonna work with the particle itself, the main missile particle, and we're gonna add a projectile script onto this. The custom inspector should help make it a little bit easier to navigate and set all the values you'd like to set for your projectile. First, we're going to set the projectile data and the spawn behavior. We have a bunch of projectile data already here, so let's just choose speed 200. And if we open up this value, we see that the speed is set to 200 and the damage value is set to 3. Now, this is something you'd likely customize for your script by creating a new projectile data child class that better fits your game and has custom logic for your game when it comes to damage and even speed and other aspects that you'd like to pass through to every projectile. Every projectile will have a projectile data object, so you can use your scripts to collect that and do something with it. Note that in any of these scripts we bring into the projectile, if you change the values here, you're going to be changing the values on all of the objects which use the same data object or behavior object or other object. And for the spawn behavior, let's go ahead and choose machine gun normal. This will allow us to hold the mouse button down in the demo scene here and have the projectile spawn uh, over and over again. Again, if you expand this, you can see all the details. You're also able to go directly to the object itself and see that in the inspector as well. Now let's move over to the behaviors tab. Behaviors control how the projectile acts, how it interacts with the world. So let's start by adding a move forward behavior. All the behaviors will show up in this list here, and you can, of course, search for them here and then add the ones you'd like with the add button. You can also choose from the list here or just drag and drop from the project view into this field, and that will add it there. We just add a raycast hit detector as well. The details here on the script says that raycast forward each frame looking for a collision, and if a collision is found, the projectile will trigger a collision with that object that it finds. Now, just because it has a collision doesn't mean it does anything yet. Currently, there's no behavior that does anything on collision. So let's do a destroy on collision here. And we'll choose the destroy on trigger or collision. All of these, you can expand and close these just by clicking the icon here. So now our object will move forward. It will use a ray cast to check for a hit in front of it. And when it collides or it's a trigger it's going to destroy all right now since we are dealing with collisions and stuff we're going to add a few more components here so let's add a rigid body and in our rigid body we're going to turn off gravity use a use gravity and let's also set the layer to projectile that way it doesn't collide with other things and other projectiles which are looking for a new target don't find it if it was in the default layer all right so i'm going to drag this down here to my projectiles folder and create an original prefab and then in my demo magic arsenal effects demo actor, I'm going to go to our setup and add this as the first and only projectile. And we can test this now in the game view. Since we're using the demo scene, we can just hit the mouse button, and hold that down to fire these off. We can see that they are indeed colliding with the wall and firing and destroying themselves. So let's go ahead and add a muzzle flash and a collision explosion. 
So with both of these objects selected, I'm going to add the destroy or pool object. This script will destroy the object or pool it if the projectile is using the pool. And in this case, our projectiles are set to use the pool. And it will send this object, this, this particle, back to the pool so we can reuse it later. So now on the explosion here, let's add some force. We're going to add the project force script here and let's change the force mode to impulse. That way the force happens just once. We'll increase the force to maybe 18 and let's make sure we've got this correct. We want the apply force in direction, which means forward in the direction that's facing an area of maybe four. So that means four meters in front, zero delay. Uh, duration doesn't matter because we are doing an impulse. So it will only happen once. And the forward angle will leave at 30. That's a 30 de degree spherical arc in front of the object. Let's go ahead and save these as prefabs. Now we need to create a spawn behavior modification for the muzzle and a behavior for the explosion as well. There's some menu options that will make this a lot faster. So let's go ahead and right click the muzzle, click create projectile factory, shortcuts, and we're going to choose the create object at spawn point, which is a spawn behavior modification. And that will create the object and populate it for us. And now we can just drag this over to our spawn behavior modifications. We're going to select the arcane explosion again, click, click create, click create projectile factory shortcuts and spawn on impact. And this is a behavior. Now these menu options work with multiple selections. So if you're setting up a whole lot of projectiles all at once, you can just select all of your particles of the same type and click that button and we'll create the object for each one. We're going to move this one to our collision behavior. Now let's load up our arcane missile prefab and in our spawn modifications, we now find the arcane arsenal, the arcane muzzle here, and we can add that to our spawn modifications, the spawn modifications fire off right after the projectile is spawned. It only happens once when it is spawned. And then the behaviors happen after that. In the behaviors list, we can now find the arcane explosion as well. And we can add that there. Go ahead and save the prefab. Let's go ahead and test this. There we go. So now we have explosions when it collides. We have the muzzle flash in the console here we can see that when we do hit the targets the damage is being passed through to them the demo scene has a very bright console log so you can double click these and dig into the code so you can see where all this magic happens that's it for this quick start video in the next one we're going to learn how to add a projectile factory to your scene including how to set up the first projectile spawner if you have any questions come to the discord and i hope to see you real real soon